This is your News Now Sports. The LCC football team continues to roll, heading into play tonight, winners of five in a row. But despite their hot play of late, the T-Birds have yet to receive much recognition as they're only ranked 13th in the Division VI state polls. Senior night at Spartan Stadium as the T-Birds play their final home game of the season, hosting Kip Columbus. First quarter, LCC strikes first as off the play action. Nevin Stolle drops one into the bucket for Jared Young for six. The senior reels in his first touchdown as a T-Bird and spikes the ball in excitement at 7-zip LCC. Next T-Bird possession, Sean Thomas gets the give. He walks in from yard out LCC in command early still in the first when Dylan Wilson gets the call he takes a whack at the goal line but stays on his feet for another T-Bird touchdown it's 21 zip home team a kip fumble puts LCC in business again as Stolly fakes me out on the play fake before finding Gus Sierra in the end zone a 12 yard touchdown pass plus a mixed extra point makes it 27 nothing T-Birds and they had one more score in them before the quarter came to an end Sean Thomas with plenty of running room here. He walks in untouched for a 39-yard score as LCC rolls 47-14. To the links now with the final day of the Division II Girls State Golf Championships. We begin on the sixth green. St. Henry's Ellen Nauman taps in for par. She finishes tied for ninth with a two-day total of 150, while St. Henry finishes tied for eighth as a team. Meanwhile, LCC was rolling today. Mary Kelly Mulcahy sinks par on the ninth. Then her sister Erin follows up with a beautiful par of her own at 11. Emma Mares nails this one for par. She shoots a 102 today at 13. It's Mary Kelly again who drills another par putt. The junior shoots a 72 on the day, finishing tied for sixth individually. Aaron at 13 follows up by sinking a par putt once again. A final round of 75 for her puts her in 11th as the LCC girls win back-to-back -back state titles with a two-day total of 647. Their reaction after bringing yet another state title back to Lima. Honestly, I was like in kind of in shock. It's just the best feeling ever. Um, in the beginning of the day, I had confidence. I had confidence all weekend, so just actually being able to do it and it's over now, so it's just a great feeling. It always comes down to how, how the four, five, even the three play. Uh, you know, it's a team event and it takes those scores and they know it and uh, that's what they do. And uh, they knew it coming in, it was going to come down to the fours and fives. Somebody was going to have to post a good score. And just like last year, we did it again this year with the fours and the fives. We all get along really well. We practice a lot together, and we just like being with each other and competing against each other. So also, three of us being sisters, it's kind of an advantage because we know our strong suits and weaknesses, and we know where to help each other when we're practicing. So just having the overall, like, family and sisters on a team. We all just feel super close. The final round of the Division Three Boys State Golf Tournament also takes place today. This round at OSU Scarlet, beginning on the 10th green. Minster's Grant Vosard is money for par. He finishes tied for 23rd with a two-day total of 166. At 11, Kaleida's Ryan Klausing chipping for birdie. That just misses. He taps in for par, though, finishing 30th with a round of 80 today. Still at 11, Fort Lormie's Zach Pleeman knocks down this putt. The Redskins shoots an 83 today, finishing tied for 27th. Another Wildcat, Josh Recker with a long birdie putt at 11. That just misses. A par tap in for him, though. Recker finishes tied for 23rd, while Kaleida takes 8th as a team. Fort Lormie's Adam Ballas makes par here at 11. Ballas shoots a round of 79 as the Skins take 9th as a team. At 12, Minster's Joseph Magato drills a par of his own. Minster finishes 5th as a team with a two-day total of 678. Finally, Temple Christian's Lincoln Waters knocks down this putt on the 4th green. The Pioneers' senior finishes tied for 47th with a two-day total of 182. To the pitch we go as a sectional semifinal takes place at Lima Senior today. The Spartans take on Toledo Bowsher. Early first half, Caden Chilcote keeping it scoreless as he stands tall on a shot from well outside the box. But moments later, how about this free kick from Alex Marchisillo teeing it up from well outside the box with bar down and in it goes. Bowsher takes the lead. But just over two minutes later, the Spartans answer when Keegan Holiday plays it into the box. And Ryan Utendorf is there to bang it home. Lima Senior wins it 4-2. to two. 
they move to the sectional finals where they will face Toledo St. John's on Tuesday. Moving indoors with girls volleyball action at LCC, the T-Birds play host to Shawnee. T-Birds took the first set, picking it up in the second where McKenna Moeller dials up an ace. It's one zip LCC. They trail here when Hannah Reepinoff bumps Jocelyn Morrissey, who finds the four. We are level at three apiece. Shawnee would hang around, though, as Kelsey Fishbaugh sets Isabel Murray, who spikes it home. The Indians lead by four, but the home team just too much today as the ball is bumped over the net where Morrissey is waiting to put it home. The T-Birds win it three to one. Back outside to the cross-country track now as the NWCC hosts their cross-country championship at Brian Putnam Memorial Wetlands today. Girls race. This is Waynesfield Goshen's Taylor Spencer claiming the crown. She finishes first with a time of 20 minutes, 18 seconds. In the boys race, Perry's Brady Yankst is your winner. The Commodore crosses the finish line in 17 minutes, 12 seconds. But Waynesfield Goshen wins the boys team title. We need to take a break here on Your News Now Sports. But when we return, we hit the college scene as both the UNOH men's and women's soccer teams host WAC opponent Cornerstone today. Find out how each team fared right after this. News out of the NFL today is Finley grad Jason Moore has been promoted from the practice squad to the 53-man roster for the Los Angeles Chargers. Moore played in 37 games for the Oilers and tallied a school record 204 receptions to go along with 3,217 yards and 39 touchdowns. Signed to the Chargers as an undrafted free agent back in April, Moore may, may make his NFL debut tomorrow when L.A. plays host to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Well, the current Oilers were in action today and they secured a big Road win, taking down GMAC foe Walsh 19 to 10. Tanner Schrader leading all receivers with 83 yards. And at the Division Three level, Bluffton falls to 0 and 6 with a 28 to 14 home loss against Rose Hulman. College soccer this afternoon as the UNOH men are in search of back-to-back -back conference wins. They play host to Cornerstone. Racers putting the pressure on early. Kareem Juini lets it rip, but the Cornerstone keeper dives to keep it out, and the Racers can't bury the rebound. But in the 17th minute, they break through as Walid Snyder. Cracks one from well outside the box and into the top corner. A beautiful goal by the freshman as UNOH wins 3-0. The third-ranked UNOH women's soccer team has won six in a row. They also welcome Cornerstone to Racer Field. First half, no score when Kate Ajimong makes her run before flicking it over the keeper into the back of the net. The senior shows off her skill to put the racers in front. UNOH would pepper the Cornerstone keeper throughout the first half, but Michaela Johnson was up to the task, making a huge stop there. The racers win it 2-0. All right, thanks so much, Matt. We'll wrap things up after the break.